Let's learn about Swiglu and the gated MLP. This is becoming extremely popular lately. I've been training my own LLM and applying this to your MLP actually works a lot better. It's also used in new uh, hybrid attention architectures like uh, uh, gated delta net. So this is extremely important and we will build off of this our knowledge later uh, in the research. I'm gonna check this flash linear attention FLA modules MLP. So I'm gonna leave uh, the link below. So Swiglu is similar to standard multilayer perceptron where you have input hidden and output, but there is also one more thing and it's gate. And this hidden is multiplied with gate. So to decide how much of it is gonna remain, how much of it of these neurons are gonna get brought down to zero. And so this is the new invention. So even if it sounds a bit confusing, uh, just watch the video and try to understand. I'm going to explain it over and over again uh, a couple of times. So just uh, try to understand. Here we can see gate projection is a linear layer from hidden size, which is the token embedding size, to intermediate size, which is just uh, this here. Now it, it's called hidden layer in this image, but don't be confused. This is the intermediate size. In our code, hidden layer means like the to token embedding. So hidden layer is actually input layer here. Uh, so token embedding goes into intermediate size and then we have this output. So that's the multi-layer perceptron. But this gate is separate. So this is the MLP and this gate is like determining uh, if it's gonna let or not let or how much is it gonna let tokens go through this MLP. And we'll explain this uh, more. So you see, you see you have a projection which is same as gate here. So hidden size to intermediate size, it's same. So we'll combine uh, these by the way, but and then down projection is intermediate to hidden. So this is up projection here to this intermediate and then intermediate back to hidden uh, would be down projection. This is very important part. So this is in FLA modules activations. This is the forward kernel for Swiglu activation function in Triton. So this, uh, I actually like this. Some people are scared or they see like Triton GPU programming, they think, oh, I don't want to do GPU programming. I want to do research. There is absolutely no way you can do research if you don't do GPU programming. Because uh, what when you code something in PyTorch, one thing will be slower than the other thing. But when you code the same thing in GPU code, the other thing will be slower than the first thing. So if you don't code your kernels, then you don't even know if your results are real or not. This is why DeepSeek is stressing uh, hardware aligned research, where because people are actually like coming with great ideas, but they cannot be parallelized on GPUs, so they're useless. So you must learn how to write your own kernels. Join my school community to become AI researcher step by step. You can see all of the modules here, videos coming every day, just $9 per month and seven day free trial. Each module has its own lessons. It's all step by step with exclusive videos. So this is parallelized across GPU and each program has its own program ID and it works on its part of these tensors. So it's split so they can be computed in parallel. So you can watch my uh, Triton for beginners tutorial, but this X, so we load uh, X tensor from memory and this X is gonna be gate tensor and this Y will be the up uh, projection. So after we apply up what the tensor we get. So and this is the output of after we apply the linear layer of the gate. And then we will use these two. So uh, let's look at these two lines here. So we have S equals to one over one plus e to the power of minus x. And we have this z is equal to x times s times y. So let's understand these two lines. So this is the general formula. This x is our hidden state. 
uh, in the beginning that I was explaining. So it's just the token vector. And then we have our up projection matrix. So this is this is our linear layer, up layer. So this creates output of like up projection matrix. And we also have gate. So you remember that when I was showing linear layers, uh, both of this up and gate are projecting from hidden size to intermediate size, hidden size being vector, token vector, size to intermediate in MLP. And as I said, uh, this gate is going to determine like how much of this will be kept uh, of this like up projection. So in order to calculate uh, this matrix, we will, we already have this. So we have output of this linear layer that produces like a gate tensor. So we need to pass that through activation function silu. It's getting a little bit complicated, but bear with me. So what is this silu function? Silu is just silu of x is x times sigmoid of x. So sigmoid is our famous function. And the formula for sigmoid is this. So again, silu is just x times sigmoid of x. So why? Uh, sigmoid is like a gate between 0 and 1, and x is the original input. So we will basically scale x based on how important it is. So maybe uh, we actually don't want this x, maybe it's not going to be so helpful in our neural network for further processing, or it will be helpful, so we will let it uh, remain big, multiplied by one, for example, or multiplied by close to zero or something. So knowing that silu of x is x times sigmoid of x, we see here uh, in our two lines of code in our that I was trying to explain. So first, this is the sigmoid. This is the formula for sigmoid, okay? And then we say x times sigmoid. So this is the silu, x times sigmoid. So this whole thing, z val is equal to x val times s times y val, implements silu x times y, which is basically our silu of the gate times input. So this is what swiglu is. It's just our silu of gate times up. And this up is the hidden, the middle layer, the hidden state of the multilayer perceptron. And this is the kernel for computing the forward pass of a swiglu element-wise gate, which is just swiglu. So its output is equal to silu of the gate times up. And then that's stored into GPU memory so we can use it in PyTorch. I want to show you here a silu function. So you see at zero, it's zero. But you see how it's smooth? It has this smooth shape. So if you go a little bit x minus 1 minus 2, it actually has a bit lower value here, but then tends towards 0. And here, it's also smooth, but then tends to like just x equals y. It turns out it's better than ReLU. Uh, although ReLU is uh, faster to calculate, so sometimes, for example, in deep six sparse attention, when they calculate this indexer, you can watch my video, but they use a ReLU for that, for simpler, faster calculation. Uh, okay, so if we have a gate, our gate projection, our x, so x is gate in this case. Uh, if we have minus 5, then silu will be, it's tending towards 0 at large negative numbers, okay? But if we go towards like minus 1, minus 2, I told you like the numbers here will be a bit lower than zero. So this is where the smoothness comes from. And then uh, at 0 0.5, it's still 0 0.3, but at five and more, it's going to tend towards being equal. So at five, it's going to be ten, 10 to, so later it's going to be, it's going to tend to equal to the X input. Now let's understand swiglu a bit more. So 
uh, we have our standard transformer feed forward block which is gonna be x times first set of matrices so this is just the forward uh, the classic feed forward multi-layer perception so you first expand into the hidden dimension you activate with some activation function and you then contract back into so this is it so you first have this x input you expand with the first set of w weights and then there is also activation function and then with the second set of uh, w weights you contract back you can see that here first set activation function contracting back the function f like uh, relu or gelu simply applies a non-linear activation on one linear projection so one linear projection and we have this activation but swiglu makes it gated the activation of one projection depends on another projection of the same input okay we have one projection of the input so this is the up projection and this is this up projection that i was explaining and then that's matrix multiplied with this gate so this is what makes it swiglu so this gate is going to actually change this up projection this hidden layer a little bit so what does it do so if our gate is a negative number remember the input to up projection and the input to gate is same but weights for up projection and weights for gate are different so gate is this is what gate does if multiplying the input times gate weights gives a negative number then uh, you will multiply so it will be like a small negative number here silu of gate will be small negative number and that will multiply our up projection so that's gonna still be very small negative small number negative or i don't know if it's negative because i don't know if this some of these dimensions some of these vector dimensions might be positive some might be negative but nevertheless this will negative uh, gate value will squish towards zero our up times silo of gate so our so these dimensions in the hidden layer and then uh, zero will actually make it zero and then one will and then three five so this will just say three times up five times up so here uh, the neural network will learn the weights for the gate so it can it's able to put uh, convert our hidden features to zero or to multiply them to increase them okay that's gonna be it for this video and uh, see you in the next one